Watford FC are known as a yo-yo club, constantly moving between the Championship and the Premier League. In 2012, they were acquired by Italian businessman Gino Pozzo and since then have spent six seasons in the Premier League and four in the Championship. But unlike Graham Taylor, who was here as Watford manager from 1977 all the way to 87 for a decade, under the same time period, under Pozzo reign, the club have gone through an astonishing 22 managers. This means each gaffer takes charge of around 18 games each, and that's approximately two managers per season. This revolving door of managers has led to unrest in the dressing room and bad results on the pitch. I think um, there's. I think that our owners think that the, the manager bounce thing is something that's good. Um, I, I, recently, that hasn't worked for sure. Um, some of the managers, you can see why they've gone, um, and other managers, you think, what are you doing? Um, so each manager is, has has been sacked or moved on for different reasons. Um, a lot of them are understandable and a lot of them aren't. In the first kind of six or eight years of the Pozzo reign, it worked well for us. We had, you know, we had success that we as Watford had never seen before. Um, however, since 2019, it has gone completely off the rails. We've had 11 managers in four seasons um, and there is no such thing as a manager bounce if you keep sacking your managers every 12 minutes you know it just it simply doesn't work but you've got basically an owner there who is trigger happy and who thinks well that's not working so we'll try something else and the problem is is that something else isn't very well thought out the the problem is is that football players are often like compared to being like school kids right because they they don't they, they don't live in the same world as everybody else um and, and the problem is if you if, if you if you take a look at a class of uh, of kids, if you provide them a supply teacher for two months and just tell them that each time, you know, if you, you just stay here, you'll just get a new teacher in a couple of months. Don't don't pay attention because, you know, you'll be you'll be going back to basics again in two months. People just they just end up stop listening, stop being motivated, stop listening to the manager. And that's basically what we've got We've you know, if you if you have go through 11 head coaches so 11 different changes of direction as to what we're supposed to be doing differently or a different voice or some different instructions or tactically different something different philosophically different whatever level it is if you keep giving them that regularity of change um and and you recruit players not for what any individual manager wants you end up with what we've got which is an absolute hodgepodge of a squad it's completely imbalanced um we've got some you know as as justin alluded to there with yao pedro we've also got a young lad called Aspria. so we've got some young talented starlets from south america and we've got nothing to put them really alongside very much the club's future is also in question, with huge debts amounting up to £124 million. Pounds. They'll have to sell a lot of shirts to cover that. The, the, the debt that we have is £124 million, pounds, which for a club of Watford size in the Championship may as well be a billion. There is, it's just a ridiculous level of debt for a club of our size to have. The only way we can... Uh, hope to bring that back is by being in the Premier League, which you then get into the catch-22 of do you spend to try to get in there, um, you know, a, a, again, and therefore put yourself you know, more at risk. £124 million pounds of debt we owe in, in total commitments, otherwise known as total liabilities, about £260 million pounds, yeah, over the next year to two years our total assets are about 240 million we've put the club we put the the, the ground in hock for a loan from a company called macquarie it's like a payday loan we've we've hocked the uh, the the parachute payments we've hocked or liquidized should we say the uh, kind of payments that would normally come through to us for player sales which are normally done over three or four year periods or the you know the term of the contract we bought those pieces in this is all being bought forward all the time um, we've just sold you know Yao Pedro in April the season isn't even done yet and we've sold him and you have to kind of ask why and when you look at the accounts and say see that there's 124 million pound debt on there we also found out by the way only last literally last month that uh 25 million pounds that we were told previously was the owner's um uh, 
borrowings or, or, or loans or assets or, 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 or liquidity or stake your kind of shares. No, that was, that was another loan, but at the holding company level that's now been paid back off. And then another loan been put into place, which is now against the club. It's very much like the Glazers leveraging debt on the actual entity of the club. And it's only happened in the last four to five years. Also, football agent Mogi Bayer, who's awaiting trial currently over match fixing money laundering charges, has also been found to be closely linked to the club and its owner. Not only has he overseen some transfers despite the accusations, but he's also regularly seen at Watford home games sitting beside the owner in the stands. And he's also involved with the club's holding company, Hornets Investment. There's all sorts of questions around um, a, a particular agent that we have involved with the club who's uh, up on a money laundering and fraud charge. And yet we are the only uh, club in England to do business with him. He sits next to the owner at home games, um, which we go, why? Because Watford, we know we know we're, we're, we're little old Watford and some people explode in the local uh, in, in the local postcode when I say little old Watford, we came up on the back of, of Graham Taylor's uh, values and standards. And to have somebody of that ilk so closely involved in the recruitment and, and in, in touch with all of these seedier side of football sits very, very poorly with everybody. And to top it all off, this season, under three different managers, the club finished 11th in the championship, which is the lowest place they finished a the season since 2014. Attendances are lowering and results are getting worse and worse. I'm sure Ralton John over there doesn't find this amusing. If they'd said to us, our plan is to keep Rob Edwards on, you probably won't like a lot of the football or some of the results, but we'll be happy with a mid-table finish and we're going to use that as a stepping stone to next season and we're going to push on. We would have gone, all right, we're happy with that, that's fine. Um, and I think that's kind of where a lot of people's expectations were, to be honest with you. What's happened? We finished mid-table, but not under those circumstances. What's happened is we've pushed and pushed and pushed to try and get up to the Premier League at first uh, time of offering. We've had two other managers since him. Uh, the football has been crap. There's just no other word for the football. It's been crap. They don't know what they're doing. The players just are not interested. They look as if a bunch of strangers have just turned up every week. You know, you feel like introducing them all um, when they come out. So I think our expectations were um, we've got a, a, an untested manager in this division. Um, we'd be happy with a kind of a mid-table finish. Guess what? That's where we are. But we're not happy with this mid-table finish because of, you know, so many other things. Some fans are starting to worry and are turning against Pozzo. Smaller protests have taken place, like banners being taken into the ground and people running onto the pitch, but club staff are shutting these down straight away. Understandably, people running on the pitch have been jumped on and people bringing banners into the ground, even small ones, have been ripped out of their hands. And you, you, So you look at the debt, you look at the corrupt involvement or a, a, the, the involvement of somebody who is in a corruption scandal, very large corruption scandal on, on mainland Europe, and the football being bad, the debt and that, what is there not to protest about? Well, um, it's interesting that you've seen banners because they're taken down the second they're put up. They are really, really strict on that. The stewards, I don't know what they've been told, but it's almost like, you know, pounce on anybody that's getting banners and things. So um, I think there's been discontent for maybe a couple of seasons. Last season was a really poor season. Uh, and, and I think there was the rumblings of people being unhappy with the owners was starting to be heard. Um, it really came down on them when they sacked Rob Edwards. It really came down on them. Then it was like, what are you doing? What What is this about? Um, and a lot of people have since, you know, we're, we're, we're hearing from people saying, oh, you know, I'm not renewing my season ticket after donkey's years or, you know, I've, I've given it up. I'm not going anymore. And people, you know, even when it's, you can hear a bloody pin drop inside the ground, it's that quiet. There's no atmosphere at all. Well, what's next for Watford? Will the debts be paid off? Will Mogi Bayat be found guilty or not guilty? And will the club turn it around on the pitch next season? Well, only time will tell. Thank you to Justin and Peter from the Do Not Scratch Your Eyes podcast for agreeing to speak to me. If you do want to see their channel, make sure to check that out. There'll be a link to that in the description. And also to see the full-length 40-minute interview with those two, see the link in the description as well, and there'll be a separate video to go and watch. If you did enjoy, please make sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment, and I'll see you in the next one.
拜。